Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. My name is Krista and I have a super, super fun video planned with you guys today. Today we are going to cure some meat or at least get the process started to cure meat. So this video will kind of go throughout a couple of days um, because some of these meats that we will be curing take over a week to cure. So the very first one that we are going to start to cure is corn beef. And we both love corned beef and it can be very difficult to find a good local source to get some corned beef. And not only that, but it, a lot of times it's hard to find if it's out of season. Corned beef tends to be very popular around March, like St. Patrick's Day time. Um, but we like it all times of the year. <laughs> we really like corned beef hash also. So I did some research a while ago when I was like, can I make my own corned beef? And sure enough, it is super, super easy to make. All you need is a beef brisket. Now the recipe that we are using calls for a three to four pound beef brisket. I believe ours is a four pound brisket. I will double check though. The reason I'm going to double check is because this recipe calls for pink curing salt. This stuff right here. So pink curing salt or pink salt number one is another word for sodium nitrate. This stuff, I believe I actually purchased this one on Amazon. It is kind of a, some people like to use it and other people like to just do like a nitrate free cure. But when you are using this stuff, you have to make sure that you are using the exact amount per pound of beef because you do not want to use too much because that is not a good situation and you don't want to use too little either because it won't cure the meat properly. Essentially all this is do doing is it is taking the, because you are leaving the meat sit for so long, it is take, removing the bacteria or unhealthy bacteria from the meat and it is also helping it to get that nice pink color that you associate cured meat with like bacon, ham, all of that stuff. Yeah, this is not pink Himalayan salt. This is something completely different. Pink Himalayan salt is like a sea salt. This is a curing salt. Um, I would recommend doing your own research with this stuff. I have done research and I am comfortable using it because I am not using a large amount of it. I'm not bombarding my body full of like this cured stuff. I, we don't eat a lot of cured meat. Um, we really don't eat processed deli meats at all. So I'm comfortable with using this in a small quantity. But again, I would definitely, definitely recommend that you do your own research on your how comfortable you are using this. I am sure there are other corned beef brimes out there that do not require pink curing salt, but this is just the recipe that I have. I've made it a couple times and we really do like it. So let's get this started. It is a very quick and easy process to do. First, what we need to do is I have four quarts or one gallon of water in this saucepan. We are going to turn the heat on to low. The only reason we are heating this up is because we need to dissolve the sugar and the salt in here. We're not cooking anything. It's just simply to get it to dissolve. So what we are going to add to this one gallon of water is we are going to add one cup of kosher salt. I am using Redmond's salt. So to this bucket, we are going to add the one cup of salt. Then we are going to add half a cup of brown sugar and it does say to pack it. So half a cup of packed brown sugar, add it to the pot. I am using filtered water um, just because I don't want to use tap water because it does contain that chloride and, st chloride and stuff and you kind of want to keep this as pure as possible. So I am using my Berkey filter for this water. I'm just going to give that a quick little stir. Okay, that is slowly starting to dissolve. While we are waiting for that to dissolve, I am just going to get this brisket put into this... Um, I don't know, it's just a plastic tub. I purchased it on Amazon. Um, 
I got it because I needed it something that would hold a gallon. So I'm just gonna try to get this like kind of squished in here. Just like kind of like that. Here it like it's not it sounds like it's dissolved. There's a little bit of grit on the bottom, but I do find that that Redmond salt does, it is a little gritty and you can't get it completely dissolved, which is fine. So what we're gonna add to this pot, I'm actually just gonna turn the heat off because I do not want it to get too hot to get off the heat. So to here we are going to add one third cup of pickling spice. This is just a pickling spice that I made my own. So we're going to add one third cup. We are also going to add four cloves of garlic minced. I do not have garlic right now, so I just have this pre-minced stuff. So I am just going to add a couple teaspoons of this into here. Okay, we're going to give this a quick little stir. It is now completely off of the heat. I did weigh the brisket out and it is just a little bit over three pounds. So we are perfect to use what they are calling for this recipe. So we are going to add to this mixture two teaspoons of this pink salt. And I really make sure that it is not like this. I am very particular with my measurements. So now we have our brisket in here. We have everything mixed together in this pot. So what we are going to do is we are going to pour this brine over top of this brisket. You want to make sure that the brine is the the brisket is completely submerged. What we're going to do now is just put the lid on this very carefully. I really don't want to spill it. So the brine is starting to or the Brisket is starting to kind of poke up a bit. So what I'm going to do, I can't really weight it down because I have too much liquid in it. And I want to make sure that I don't take out the needed liquid because I have that exact amount of curing salt in here. So I am going to kind of keep coming daily and just kind of pushing this down just to make sure that it is always, always covered and submerged. So this needs to stay in the fridge for approximately seven to eight days. Again, like I said, I'm going to come back and keep checking it and making sure that it is staying submerged under the water because you that's we're brining it. So for this, I will see you guys back in eight days. I also want to add with that corned beef, it probably would be a benefit to have a two gallon pail. That would work amazing to um, brine that in because then you would be able to have the amount of liquid in and then get that completely submerged under with like a plate or something to hold it down. I'm going to get down here so you guys can see me. So next on the list is a super, super fun one. It is beef salami. And I was so super surprised to learn how easy it is to make. Um, so I guess this is like a very big base recipe. Um, I guess you could like add different seasonings that you and your family like. Um, you could also, when it is done doing its um, curing process, you could also probably put this on the smoker and smoke it. So it would be like a smoked salami, which would be delicious. We've never done it. Um, but this recipe does take about three days to make. So it does, it does take some time. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to get it started and then we'll, I'll walk you through it. And like I said, these, vi this video is going to kind of be, um, carried on throughout a couple of days because like that that corned beef is gonna take what seven eight days to do so let's get started making this salami so to a bowl we are going to add two pounds of ground beef it just says hamburger I'm just gonna use ground beef it does not specify whether it needs to be super lean, with your fat content in it doesn't, it doesn't specify. I think the beef that we are using is an 8515. It potentially might be an uh, 8020. Actually, I think it's an 8020 because it does have quite a bit of fat in it. We were told it was supposed to be an 8020. 
All I'm doing right now is I'm just breaking up this ground beef because it was in those um, cubes. To this um, ground beef, we are going to add half a teaspoon of mustard seeds. I am just using a yellow mustard seed here. I actually think I'm going to add a little bit more because it does add a really good flavor to it. And that does not look like enough. Let's add a little bit more. So I'm going to improvise it. I'm going to say we're adding a teaspoon of mustard seed to this. And then we are going to add half a teaspoon of crushed black pepper. We are going to add three cloves of garlic minced. So again, we, I don't have that garlic, so we're just going to go like a nice big heaping teaspoon. And then we are going to add two tablespoons of Morton Quick Cure Salt. This is what it looks like. I purchased this at um, my local Amish. Um, you could probably definitely get it on eBay also. This is not the same as pink curing salt. This is something completely different. And then we are going to add one cup of filtered water to this. And then we're just going to stir it all together. I want to apologize if this is really loud. <laughs> I'm trying to, I tried to get it done without the camera on. What we need now is two pieces of aluminum foil. We are going to divide this mixture into two parts. So just divide it in half on the foil here and then what we are going to do is we are going to mold each one into a log we are now going to tightly wrap this in um, in this foil and what we want to do now is we want to twist the ends we're just getting it nice and tight When you twist the ends, it kind of makes it more of a, so that is what that looks like. So let's get the second one done now. So now we have both of these done. We are going to put them in the refrigerator for 24 hours. And then after 24 hours, we'll come back and I'll show you what the next step is with them. The last fun one we are making today is one of my favorites because I, again, find, I have a hard time trying to find it local. So it is pepperoni. This recipe you can actually freeze also. It does make two logs, but they are thinner logs, but it does say you can refrigerate. So if you don't use it all, it does last good in the freezer. Now this one does specify that it says to use a lean ground beef. So it says 85% lean or leaner. We are using that 80, 20. So I've made it with this stuff before and it has turned out perfectly fine. So but it does recommend 85% or leaner. So let's get that ground beef into our bowl. Okay, and to this ground beef, so I just kind of mashed it up, just kind of mashed it up a little bit. We are going to add one teaspoon of liquid smoke. I am using a hickory liquid smoke. I know there are a whole bunch of different flavors out there. I just have hickory or mesquite, and I figure I would like the hickory flavoring better. So we're gonna use one teaspoon. In. Then we are going to use one teaspoon of ground black pepper. We're gonna use one teaspoon of whole mustard seeds. Then it says either three fourths to one teaspoon of fennel seeds, and we are using the whole fennel seed. Now it does say to lightly crush it. I'm gonna put one teaspoon of whole fennel seeds in here. I love the smell of fennel. So we're just kind of mashed them up a bit and now we're gonna add them back into here. I should have maybe put a little bit of those uh, mustard seeds in there too. 
if you don't have one of these, you could probably even use like, um, a, like a spice grinder or like a little coffee grinder. So next up is either half a teaspoon to one teaspoon of crushed red chili flakes. So this is where you can determine if you want to have a super spicy pepperoni or you just want like a little bit of a milder one. I am going to put only half a teaspoon in because I want a milder one. This is a pepperoni that we are going to be using on pizza. I have I have pizza on the menu for next week, so this pepperoni is going to get used on it. And I don't want too spicy of pepperoni, because um, we can always add red pepper flakes to the pizza if we want. So we're going to put in half a teaspoon in here. And then we're going to put half a teaspoon of paprika. I am actually using a smoked paprika, because I'm really trying to get that smoky flavor in there. You can use regular paprika or well, whatever you want. And then we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. We're going to add a quarter teaspoon of just white granulated sugar. Not very much at all. And then we are going to add a teaspoon of this Morton's Tender Quick Home Meat Curing Salt. Now it does actually say, I have written down here, and again, I, I apologize, I don't know where I got these recipes from uh, because I've been making these for years now. Um, I found them on the internet somewhere. So unfortunately, I don't have any recipe to reference for you guys, but um, it does say here that regular salt will turn the meat brown. So you have to use this stuff in, in it. You can't substitute regular salt for it. And we need one teaspoon of this. It says using your hands, stir this all up. It was all mixed up and it has that beautiful kind of pepperoni color to it. I think that the paprika is what kind of lends to that um, coloring with this. And you really do have to mix it with your hands because you've got to make sure you get that um, salt all incorporated into it so that it cures evenly. So now what we're going to do is we are going to cover this and we are going to refrigerate it for 48 to 72 hours. Just leave it in the bowl and just leave it in the fridge. We'll be back in 48 to 72 hours to finish this pepperoni. We're on day two of the salami. So I have a large pot of boiling water right here. And what we are going to do is we are going to take the logs that we've let rest in the fridge for the 24 hours, and we are going to put them into the boiling water. We're just going to lay them into the water. Just want to make sure that they're submerged. So now we're going to wait for this water to come back to a boil. And then once it returns to a boil, we are going to boil these for one hour. Then after the one hour, we are going to remove them from the water and poke some holes. So we will be back in one hour to go to the next step. So what we are going to do is just take it out. First of all, I'm going to turn the burner off. So we are going to take it out, try to get as much as that liquid out of it as possible. And then we are going to, with a fork, we are going to poke holes on the bottom of it. This will be the bottom. And then why we're doing this is because you see all that liquid that's coming out of it? You've gotta get it all out. So I just put it on a clean platter and what we're going to do is now we are going to refrigerate it again for another 24 hours. Like I said, these, this process is definitely, they take a while, but it is very much worth it. So let's get it back into the fridge. It's going to drain more while it's in the fridge. So 24 hours. So I will see you back again tomorrow and then we get to open it up and try it. We are on day three of the salami and it is finally ready to cut open. So let's grab it out of the fridge. I, in the future, when I make it, I am not gonna make it so long and skinny. I like them kind of more 
I like bigger rounds. Like when you cut it, you get a bigger piece. So in the future, I'm not going to make them as skinny, but let's open them up and see what they look like. Okay, first one. I may open it up over here in case there's any water left in it. is what they look like so they would probably look different if you put them in a casing and did this but these these are fine and they smell delicious absolutely delicious guys this is what it looks like hopefully there's enough light you can see it's perfect and if you smoke them, they would be even more divine. Give it a try. I love it. Mm. Perfect. Perfect, perfect salami. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to wrap them up in plastic wrap. I am probably going to end up freezing the other one that we did. Um, just because I know we're not going to eat them in a matter of a couple of days. Um, I believe that they stay fresh in your fridge for up to a week, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm gonna get the second one in the freezer because these are so perfect to have with cheese and crackers. With some homemade sourdough crackers and cheese, oh, it would be delicious. There's the second one. Or just taste the second one just to see how it is. Yep, tastes perfect. So day four, and we now are taking the pepperoni out of the fridge. It's a little bit browner than it normally is. Um, I'm thinking I probably should have got to it yesterday, but that's okay. It smells delicious. So what we are going to do is we are going to take this meat and divide it into two parts. We are going to form these two parts into two long rolls or logs, however, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so we have them formed into two long rolls. And what I have here is just a cookie sheet, like one of these cooling rack things. And I am just putting it over top of a baking sheet. The reason you wanna do this is so that all of that fat can drip below there because essentially what we're doing is we're drying out this meat. I have my oven preheated at 200 degrees and we are gonna put this in the oven for eight hours. Every two hours we need to come and rotate it. So eight hours <laughs> total. Let's get these in. Now I will come back after the first two hours and show you guys kind of how I'm going to be rotating it. Um, but it is a long, it's going to be a long day cooking these. So it is good to do it on a day where you know you're kind of going to be puttering around the house. It's a perfect project for that. It has now been a little bit over two hours. It's been maybe two and a half hours. We're going to do our first flip. It definitely smells like pepperoni in my house. So we are just going to just turn them this way. Here is a little preview of what they look like. They are starting to pink up a little bit. So we are gonna get these back into the oven. We are now at four o'clock and it is done. We are gonna take it out and it definitely looks done. They are done and it says to wipe off the excess grease and allow them to cool. Now I think these actually turned out a little bit more browner than normal because if you can see the grease on them. 
Uh, typically, and when I have made them in the past, they do turn bright pink, but these ones did not. But they definitely smell like pepperoni. Let's cut into one and see. They are dry. So yeah, they are pink inside. So this is what they look like inside. And there we go. Perfect. Pepperoni. It tastes good. I, I think I'd need to slice them like really thin. They have to cool and then they need to be chilled and then sliced thinly. Then you refrigerate for up to two weeks or you could put them into the freezer for longer storage. I will end up putting one of these into the freezer because we are going to be doing pizzas on the menu this month. So I want to have that to use. So this is the pepperoni. It tastes good. We are now on our last day. Today is the day that we get to cook the corned beef and I am so excited about it. Let's get it out of the fridge. It has been in the fridge now for eight days. So we are going to get it out. It's just right here. We're gonna get it out and we're gonna get it soaked because it has been in the brine, you need to rinse it really, really well. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a super, super salty meat. So let's get this rinsed off, and then we are going to get it put back into another pot. Okay, we are going to drain it. The lid off first. I've already cleaned my sink out a bit. Sorry, I just get down here. You guys can't see me. I've already cleaned my sink out a bit. So all as I'm doing right now is I'm going to take the um, corned beef and we're going to rinse it off really well. We're actually going to dump this out first. And that's what it looks like. It is brown and beautiful. So let's get it rinsed off really well. So now that we have it rinsed off, I'm just kind of shaking it a bit. We're going to put it into a pot and this pot just has some plain filtered water in it and we're going to dunk it down in this plain water. I have the meat completely submerged in the water. Now that we have clean filtered water in here and we have the brisket all rinsed off, we are going to add four cloves of garlic into this water and again, another one third cup of our pickling spices that we brought, used in our brine. I'm gonna use just like a heaping teaspoon of, or yeah, teaspoon. Of garlic and I'm just gonna give this a stir. We are going to bring this to a boil. Because you use a brisket to make corned beef, briskets are a meat that likes to be cooked very on low heat for a very long time. So low and slow is how you cook briskets. So the same way is low and slow is how you are going to cook this corned beef. Now, I am doing the stovetop way of, of doing this. I'm probably going to let this cook for about five hours. Once it comes to a boil, I am going to bring it down to probably a low simmer, and I am going to let it simmer there probably all day. I would use my Instapot or my crock pot to cook this also, because again, you can just leave it on your counter, but I'm actually making yogurt right now, so I don't have it available. So we're going to use the stovetop method. So five hours, we're going to let this cook for. You, if you cook it too fast on too high of a heat, you're probably going to get a really tough dried out meat. Like it's not going to be very good. In order to get that nice tender um, beef, really, again, low and slow. And you really have to make sure that you get it rinsed off really well. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a very salty um, core beef. So... Hopefully, fingers crossed, we got it rinsed off good enough. So I guess I will see you guys back when we are serving this up in five hours. And I am super excited to try it. 
I also want to let you guys know, we actually had um, some English muffin pizzas last night, which are just, we, I just take an English muffin, cut it in half, put pizza sauce, cheese, all our toppings on it. It's called an English muffin pizza. They're so good. Anyways, we had our pepperoni on that last night and it was delicious. Absolutely delicious. And we have been eating that salami. I was hoping to be able to take some of it um, with us when we go for our Thanksgiving. Um, but unfortunately, we have eaten almost the whole thing. <laughs> and because Thanksgiving is in a couple of days, I don't have time to actually make another one. So I should have made more than just those two. I should have probably made four of them because they turned out so awesome. Hope you guys give that a try. Anyways, I will see you guys back when this brisket is done and it is supper time. So it has been about five hours and it is now finished. I want to show you guys what it looks like. Remember, it is still in the water, but we will take it out together. Now I may have potentially tried a little piece and it is delicious what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drain off the liquid and I am going to put this um, corned beef on a platter and I'm actually just gonna wrap it with some foil because it is only um, it's only like three o'clock so it's not supper time yet so I don't want it to um, I don't want it to get too wet and saturated. Um, and plus I want to show you guys what it looks like when it's cut. So I'm going to drain this and then we'll get it on a platter. It is falling apart. Amazing. Let's cut into this and I want to show you guys what it looks like. Pull apart. This was cooking for five hours. Look at how red that is. It is so, so, so yummy. We are now finished all of our cured meats. We did all three this past week. I hope that this video was informative and kind of took that intimidation out of curing your own meats at home. It, it's super easy and if you have access to a local um, beef source then you will find how much better that tastes. Like that corned beef, I am so excited about that tonight. Thanks for watching guys and if you like the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this. Bye guys!